Welcome back to Friday Classic Hymns. Today I want to look at a song that my friend Jenny has been begging me to do for a little while. She's a member of our church and she's been saying to me, you know, it would be great for the series you're doing is, Oh Love That Wilt Not Let Me Go. Now I don't really know this one. I think I've heard the Gaithers sing it. They do like an a cappella arrangement, which is really great. But I never listened to it much. And so exploring it this week and getting to know the words and the story has been very precious because it really is an amazing song. Do you have any memories of the song? Do you know it and have you sung it anywhere special? I would love for you to share your memories in the comments below. Maybe if one of the lines or the verses of the song really strikes you today, put that in the comments below. I'd love to read what your thoughts are on how the words impact you all these years after it being written. Big thank you to those of you who subscribe. If you don't already, please do that. And to those of you who support my ministry through Patreon and PayPal, I want to thank you very much. It really goes a long way. But let's talk about Oh Love That Will Not Let Me Go. The man behind the song is George Matheson. He was born in 1842 in Glasgow in Scotland. And from a young age, he had very bad eyesight. By the time he was in university, his eyesight really was failing. And he ended up going blind quite young. But even so, he was a brilliant scholar, rose to the top of his class and graduated with flying colors, went to the seminary of the Church of Scotland and became really one of the most respected and loved ministers of his time. Now, there's a story behind the song that it seems is actually false. Some have told the story of him falling in love during his years at university. But when he told his would-be wife, that he was going to go blind completely at some point. She is said to have told him, I don't want to be married to a blind man, and so she broke it off. And some have said that that was the, the reason that he wrote this song. But it doesn't seem to be the case at all. He became a minister, and it was in his 40s when he was a minister that he wrote the song, and he even explains it himself. Here are his words and his account of writing this song. My hymn was composed in the manse of Inelin on the evening of the 6th of June, 1882, when I was 40 years of age. I was alone in the manse at that time. It was the night of my sister's marriage, and the rest of the family were staying overnight in Glasgow. And something happened to me which was known only to myself, and which caused me the most severe mental suffering. And the hymn was the fruit of that suffering. It was the quickest bit of work I ever did in my life. I had the impression of having it dictated to me by some inward voice rather than of working it out myself. I'm quite sure that the whole work was completed in five minutes and equally sure that it never received at my hands any retouching or correction. I have no natural gift of rhythm. All the other verses I've written are manufactured articles, but this came like a day spring from on high. Now his sister had been his housekeeper, had helped him cope as a blind man, and so when she was married, this was a big step for him as well. And the theory is that that's why he was so depressed on that night. As she was about to be married, he was trying to figure out what he was going to do. And so it was in his grief, whether caused by this moment or by something else, or as some have thought, maybe it was caused by him thinking back to when he was young and he was rejected by that girl. Some people think that that's the story. Whatever it was, it was on this night of grief that he sat down and the song came pouring out. It just came pouring out and some of the greatest songs are written like that. They just come to you. They're clearly inspired. Others are a real work of labor. But this seems to have really been a God-inspired moment. And I think it proves that even when we are depressed and when we're in a bad place, God can still work. A friend of mine once said to me that God does his best work when we're in caves. And he was talking about how David used to write these psalms when he was in a cave, when he was hiding from his enemies, and God was shaping David in those moments. And so maybe this was a moment like that for George Matheson. As was quite normal for that time, it was just written as a poem, and later music was put to it. And so the first time anyone saw this was in a publication by the Church of Scotland, and they saw these beautiful words. And it was an organist, a Scottish organist by the name of Albert Peace, who took these words and put them to music. And he wrote a beautiful tune named St. Margaret. And many people believe the tune is part of the success of this song. People love to sing it because it's got a beautiful melody. Matheson carried on as a minister the rest of his life. He wrote some beautiful devotional works. And he wrote 
a good many more songs as well, although this is the one that everybody remembers. It's even said that he preached for the Queen at some point and that she was so impressed by his preaching that she gave him a sculpture of herself. Rather than a painting, which he of course couldn't see, she gave him a sculpture. His hymn lives on and it has had such a deep impact. Do you know, some of these hymns that I do for Friday Classics, I have to really scratch around for material. But when I picked up the books that I normally use to research these hymns, this one was in all of them. This was really a favorite of its day. So let's take a look at the words that he wrote. The song has four verses, and each verse has a different theme, which you can see in the first line. Verse one is, O oh love, love is the theme. O oh love that wilt not let me go. I rest my weary soul in thee. Beautiful. This love of God doesn't let us go when we're going through difficulties. It doesn't just say, okay, you're on your own. When you've sorted yourself out, come back. But it hangs on to us. Jesus spoke about how, as the good shepherd, his sheep cannot be snatched out of his hands. And so his love holds us. I rest my weary soul in thee. Do you rest your weary soul in the love of God when you're in that sort of a place? I give thee back the life I owe. And so he's saying, I owe you so much and so I give you my life. Now, of course, we can't even do anything to merit God's love. It's not as if we say, take my life and then that will be enough to merit your salvation. No, of course, his love is, is unearned and it's given as a gift of grace. But in response, he's saying, I give you back my life. Take my life and, and use it in your service. And every Christian who understands the love of God that doesn't let them go offers their life and says, Lord, use me, take my life. I give thee back the life I owe, that in thine ocean depths its flow may richer, fuller be. Beautiful. He's saying, in the depths of, of the love of God, my life will be fuller and richer. As, as the love of God flows over me like an ocean, I will have fuller and richer life. And so I give my life to him and trust that he will hold me and make my life what it is. That's a beautiful verse to sing. I love it. And this is certainly true, by the way, of the love of God. There is a richness and a fullness in the love of God that nothing else on earth can bring us. If you're looking for a rich and full life, the love of God that won't let you go is where you can find the deepest, the deepest waves of wonder and richness and fullness. Amazing. Verse 2 says this, O light, so the theme's going to be light in this verse, O light that follows all my way, I yield my flickering torch to thee. Now remember, this man was blind, and so this must have been a special one for him to write. God is light that follows us, that lights up our way. And I like how he says, I yield my flickering torch to thee. And so the light that I have is just flickering, and it's, it's not strong it's kind of frail, but God's light is stronger. He says, my heart restores its borrowed ray, that in thy sunshine's blaze, its day may brighter, fairer be. It's a little bit tricky, but he's saying, my life is like a borrowed ray. I've just borrowed life from you. Just a single ray of light is my life. But in your sunshine's blaze, the day of my life can be brighter, and fairer. Again, this is a beautiful line about how life, true life, true light is found in God. Our lives are just like flickering rays of light, but when we yield to him, then his, his sunshine blazes and envelops our lives so that they are brighter and fairer. And remember, he was writing this in a dark season. He was, he was in a dark place spiritually. And so when you're in a dark place spiritually, remember the light of God and call out for him that his light may overwhelm your darkness and make your day brighter and fairer. Verse 3 is about joy. O oh joy that seekest me through pain. Wow, that line has been sticking with me since I've read these lyrics. Joy that seeks me. Do you get a sense of God seeking you through pain? Often when we're going through pain, we get angry with God. And so we reject him. And we don't have eyes to see that he's seeking us. 
But the songwriter says, I cannot close my heart to thee. Even though I'm going through pain, I cannot close my heart to God. That is faith. Saying, while I'm in pain, I'm going to still be open to him because I know he's seeking me. And in these beautiful words, I trace the rainbow through the rain and feel the promise is not vain that morn shall tearless be. And so though it's raining, I look up and I, I see the rainbow through the clouds. I see God's love through the clouds. And I, I remember and I feel in my heart that his promise to always be with me and that a time of joy and recovery from this pain is coming, that promise I believe in it and I hold on to it. Today, friends, as you go through a time of difficulty and maybe a rainstorm of some sort, can you trace the rainbow through it and and hold on to God's promises that a tearless morning is around the corner? God is seeking you in your pain. Even this man in his darkness and in his struggle knew that God was seeking him and hadn't let him go. And then verse 4 says, O cross, that liftest up my head, I dare not ask to fly from thee. The cross is a sign of, of sacrifice and of suffering. And so he's saying this cross that I'm bearing it makes me lift up my head to God. I'd, I'm not going to ask to be rid of this cross. That's a very powerful statement, especially in light of this man's story. A man who was blind saying, I'm not going to ask to fly from this cross that I'm bearing. But he goes on, I lay in dust, life's glory dead. And from the ground there, blossoms red, life that shall endless be. He's saying, I'm lying in the dust, humbled by my suffering. But the glory of this life is dead. Because the life that I've given to God, you know, my worldly life is dead. That's at least how I read it. Life's glory, whatever glories life can give to me, I have yielded all of that to God. All of that is, is gone. And now I have been born again and I have this new, this new life that will be endless. Eternal life that God promises. Now this line about blossoms red, he explains this. He said that white blossoms represent prosperity, but red blossoms represent self-sacrifice and suffering. And so for him, as he lies on the ground humbly, giving himself to God, sacrificing himself, dying to his old life, there's a blossoming that happens. Sure, it's a red blossoming because there's self-sacrifice involved. It's not a blossoming in prosperity, but it's a life that will be endless that comes out of that sort of self-giving. And that is the song. It is beautiful. O oh, love that wilt not let me go. O oh, light that follows all the way. O oh, joy that seekest me through pain. O oh, cross that liftest up my head. Let me ask you, which verse really touched you today? Which one of these really meant something to you as you read the words? And so let's sing it together. As I learned it this week, I was looking at a beautiful version by Heart Cry Worship. If you go look up that version, it really touched me. And also Amy Grant's version was very cool. Hers had a bit more of a kind of a funky vibe to it with a horn section. I really liked that. But I'm going to do it just me on the piano. And so sing along. Please go over to my website and look at all the other classic hymns I've done, as well as all my other music and my daily devotions and the rest. Sing it with me and may God touch you as we do. Stop. 
stars its borrowed ray that in thy sunshine's blaze its day may brighter fairer be oh joy that seekest me through pain I cannot close my heart to thee I trace the rainbow through the rain and feel the promise is not vain that morn shall tearless be up my head I dare not ask to fly from thee I lay in dust life's glory dead and from the ground there blossoms red that life shall end 